Hey guys, Johnny from Ignite here. Thanks for tuning in again to one of our videos. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. I'd really appreciate it. We're gonna be releasing a lot more content on HSC studies and literary texts. And also, if you are doing the HSC, check out our website at ignitehsc.com.au. We've got a huge online database of resources available there for you. So have a look at that when you have a spare moment as well. But without further ado, today's video, I wanna look at and explain what I think the ending scene means in Metropolis, the film by Fritz Lang. Enjoy. Okay, so what I've got here is two key images, two key screenshots or snapshots of the film that I think represent the ending to me, or what I'm going to be treating as the ending of the film. And hopefully you're already acquainted with most of the film or a lot of the meaning that is behind the film, because when we look at this ending, it's very important to appreciate everything that came before it, of course. Uh, and everything that came before it is basically summarized by a lot of chaos, a lot of inequality between the classes. We've seen the working class of this particular city be exposed to really dehumanizing conditions. But as we move towards the end, we see a manufactured rebellion. So we see a rebellion that occurs of the working class. We see this uprising, but it was actually manufactured in the sense that Friedison, the totalitarian leader, wanted that rebellion, right? He's actually orchestrated it by using his creation of a robotic double of Maria, who is seen as a saint. He actually creates a robotic double of a woman who is respected, the angelic, the virginal Maria, who represents everything about purity and innocence, and she is the hope of the working class when they are divided and they're suffering with these really brutal conditions. And he actually makes this other version of her, and she then orchestrates on Friedison's command a rebellion, because he actually wants them to rebel. He wants them to rip apart the city, rip apart the workers' city, that is, underground. And you might be asking, why does he do that? He does that because he knows that if they do that, they are going to be destroyed. Not, not all of them are going to die, they're going to escape, but they're going to be ultimately vulnerable and realize we need Friedison. We actually are dependent on him, so we shouldn't rebel. We should respect the power structure that is in place in this society. That's what he wants them to think, and that's his objective. But unfortunately, when the rebellion takes place, he's not aware that his son, Frieda, is actually part of that rebellion. So someone from the upper class, who is obviously very connected to Friedison, is joining that rebellion because he's the mediator between these classes in the film. And when he actually comes up, he almost dies in this flooding scene and he just escapes. And then when he comes up, Friedison realizes that Frieda is being threatened to death by Rotwang, who is an enemy of Friedison. So we see in this powerful moment here, right towards the end, that Friedison, the leader, the person who has oppressed all of the working class, is exposed and vulnerable here. And we see that revealed through the use of chiaroscuro lighting, that he's exposed in the light, and we see kind of a darker background there. And look at the spacing as well. He's actually isolated here, and he's kind of low down. The leveling is very important. He is supposedly at the top of the hierarchy, and yet when we actually look at this visually, he is the lowest in the frame, which is really important because it shows that someone at the top can be humbled. Someone can be humbled by something unexpected. They are not always in control. He's very helpless in this scene because he thinks Frida, his son, might die, and he has actually orchestrated the rebellion that has led to that sequence of events. So he is not infallible, meaning he can be wrong, he can mess up, so we actually see some kind of hope here that he values family enough. He actually loves his son enough. He's not so robotic and mechanical himself, he's still a human at the top, and he's still a human at the end of the day. And Friedison loves his son enough. He actually realizes that there are more important things. There are familial values that are important to him. And because of that, the film is starting to offer this utopian potential, this utopian sensibility whereby we see the class inequality that we have could potentially be restored. What you see in the final, final moment of the film, we see Frieda, who is the son of Friedison, actually bring the working class, embodied by Grot, together with Friedison, who runs Metropolis, the totalitarian leader, if you like. And he actually pulls their hands together, and as he brings them together, they get very close to a handshake, and then the film ends. 
So there is this sense, there is this openness of the film to a utopian future that is a better future, a better world, a more ideal world that isn't defined by chaos and upheaval and uncertainty. So my reading of the ending is that there is this small promise of hope for the future that perhaps the upper class and the lower class can work together in unity as one body. The hand and the heart and the brain can all be unified and actually work as a collective rather than being separated and stratified as they are throughout the whole film. Now, you do need to keep in mind this is only towards the end that this happens and that for the majority of the film, the workers are very oppressed and are very dehumanized. So, it is a small glimpse of hope. That's the kind of perspective I'll give you. It's a small glimpse of hope. There's a potential, but there's also a gap that we ourselves need to fill in terms of whether we want to realize that potential or we want to let things keep going as they are in this rapid industrializing capitalist world. So that's my interpretation of the ending of Metropolis. Hope that gives you something to think about. There's lots of interpretations that go behind this, but I hope you found that useful. Please subscribe to our channel and like the video if you did. Make sure you check out the resources at ignitehsc.com.au if you are studying a text such as Metropolis and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.